So the, the group grew organically up to about 1992, and the MRC came and reviewed us and gave us an A star or whatever they called them those days. I can't remember the equivalent of a program. But said, no, you can't have an MRI machine. You will have to use time on the one in the hospital. And there was this sort of lack of comprehension that this was the next big push coming out of PET into function of the brain was going to be through MRI. So we started, I started looking around, where to go. You know, there, were, there was America, there were all sorts of interesting things were happening. And I met David Gordon, who was deputy secretary, I think, of the Wellcome Trust at the time. Perhaps he wasn't called a secretary, he was called something like that. Deputy director. And he, we were having a chat in a queue in an Oxford college going into an Alzheimer's disease symposium. And he said, why don't you apply for a programme grant at the Wellcome? I'd been banging on about not getting an MRI machine. I said, don't be silly. This, this would be, an, off the top of my head, 20 million. I said, why don't you apply for a programme grant there? David, you didn't hear me. Why don't you apply? I said, I hear you. So we went away and wrote the grant. The trust had very few administrators at the time. It was flush, flush with cash. We were so lucky. We got all the money. We could do what we liked with it. There was no one, there was enough, not, no one to control it. So we, we designed and built the building essentially ourselves. We designed our governance. So it's always been a flat governance with the principals meeting, everything being decided there, nothing outside, nothing in the corridors and so on. And creating that ethos was, was absolutely critical to the success of the place. And the other principles we had right early on was as many women as men, as many foreigners as indigenous, as no one sitting next to anyone else who was of the same discipline, no one sitting next to anyone else working on the same project, open plan labs, principles seen by the, the fellows to be working together and not combating each other. The fight was with the outside world and not inside. And uh, that has pretty much continued. There's been a lot of pressure put on to try and identify who was responsible for what, uh, specifically what did you do, what did you do. Absolute lack of comprehension of the whole dynamic of this sort of big science. But I think uh, a lot of the things we did very early on have, have become part and parcel of normal, normal scientific life. I mean, you know, away days and retreats and this sort of stuff. One thing I should say uh, is that there was one person who was ab absolutely critical to, I think, the overview and, and the actual enabling of this whole uh, extraordinary uh, event, which was the setting up of the, the functional imaging laboratory, which we call the FIL. You know, it's, it's known the world over as the FIL. It's now the Wellcome Trust Centre for Neuroimaging, but it's still the FIL. So the, 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 the person who I'd really need to mention is, is Sir Stanley Pitt. Stan Pitt uh, was, was from Magnetic Resonance. He had uh, worked a lot with David Gadian and, and seen what was possible. Uh, he, was, he was very close to Samir Zeki and to David Gordon. They, they went and, and educated themselves. They went round centres, left, right and centre. Um, and it was their backing, really, of a political type and of, a, of an institutional type, which was absolutely critical to getting the money because it was quite unprecedented, £20 million in one go. Yeah.